Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura. And what is a clapper? It can be used for sewing, but can it also be used for quilting? Let's find out. A tailor's clapper or a clapper is traditionally made out of wood. This would be the traditional style. It is flat on both sides. It has a small round end and a larger round end. And right down the center, there's this groove that is cut out on both sides. And those grooves are designed for us to hold on to something as we are using our clapper. There really is no right or wrong side to use. You can hold the small side or you can hold the large side. It is a tool that helps us in pressing. And it's not designed so that we're pressing on it. It's designed so that we have the fabric underneath and we use the tool. Some fabrics, even though we press them right with that iron down, they don't want to lay flat. A lot of it has to do with the fabric or how thick that seam is. And that's where the clapper comes in handy. We press that seam and then before that seam is dry, we place that wooden clapper on top of the seam. And we can even give it a little bit of a tap or we're clapping it down. This motion with the wood is taking that heat and moisture and pushing it right into the fibers. That's going to help those seams lie flat. It can also be used to help open up the seams and to hold those seams down until they're set. We can still press those seams open. We can place this on top or do a little tap to help that seam go flat. It also works really well when we have seams all coming into the center so that there's a lot of fabric in these points. If we take those seams and just finger press them in the direction that we want and then turn that quilt block over, working on the top of the fabric works great because that way we can make sure that we don't have any of those fold overs where the seams go. And to get this little center flat, sometimes we need a lot of heat and a lot of steam. That heat and steam can distort a block and can leave grooves in your fabric. If you've ever ironed really, really hard, you will notice that you can see that back seam from the front side. So using the clapper helps avoid that. Press a little bit and then take that clapper and push that heat down so that it goes right in. You can see already how much that went down. The clapper is also designed so that we don't iron at all. We steam press. So if we have a seam that we need to press down and the fabric is delicate, or we don't want to have the iron go directly on the fabric, we will steam those seams so the iron's not touching the item. That's going to give enough heat, and then we're going to be able to place that clapper on and let that heat penetrate into the fibers. And that's going to give us a good flat seam. Using the steam and a clapper is especially good for fabrics such as velvet. If we press on velvet, we will leave the iron mark right on those fibers. It pushes the fibers down and those fibers will not come back up. So if you're pressing velvet, we need to smooth out the surface, give it some steam, and then we can gently place that clapper right on top. It's heavy enough to press this without us having to bang it. When we lift it up, we have a perfectly flat seam without distorting and ruining the fabric. You can also use satin and other fabrics the same way. You're going to steam it and you can steam it from either side. And I always test a piece before I do the front side. Once it's steamed, we can place that clapper on top. I press as much as I can from the back side. Regardless if I use the clapper or not, it really 
saves an accident from happening. So it is a good habit to get into. We can also use pressing cloths over top of our fine fabric. That steam will penetrate right through the pressing cloth and we can still use that clapper in the same way. The clappers were designed to use only steam and then we press that clapper down. However, sometimes I find we can still just press that surface and then place that clapper on top and let it cool down to give a nice crisp seam. So we have a traditional clapper and we have some fun clappers. All the clappers are made out of wood and there's not supposed to be any finish on them. So you're not going to find them shellacked. We do need that smooth raw wood in order for the heat to penetrate and the wood helps absorb the extra. Cottage Lane has a new take on the clapper. It still has that great shape that we can hold on to, but they've added some measurements on the side and a pin cushion. And this pin cushion can be removed. They really are very pretty. The next type of clapper is a new style. We still have that flat surface and the raw wood, but along the top, we have this roll and it's covered with wool. We can use that clapper the same as we can the traditional ones, but that long piece does have an advantage. The wood is just about 20 inches. So if we're going to do a long strip of fabric, sew those edges together, we can steam or press and let that 20 inches sit on top of a long strip of fabric. In dressmaking, we do use larger seams. And our fabrics are not always cotton. So we want to be very gentle on the edges of these seams. So we lay the fabric open so that seam is running down the center of that curve. Now we can press. And if we look closely, you can see I'm only pressing a very small surface. This little edge on both sides is not being pressed. And when we turn that over, we still have a perfectly pressed seam. Even with a quarter inch seam allowance, we can still do the same. And the wool also holds onto the fabric so it doesn't shift. So we're not stretching it out of place. If you use a clapper in any other way, I would love to hear about it. And if you know of another clapper, that would be fun to hear about too. So clappers are basically a pressing aid. So we have the traditional style, the traditional style with a little added pin cushion and a new modern one. Now I'm sure there's a lot more out there than just these three, but I thought they'd be fun to start off with. And as always, I'll put a link in the description so you can check them out. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're talking about next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.